Greg Dacko is Oxford Economics Chief U.S. Economist. And by the way, I didn't even mention we got the latest read on GDP this morning or the revision, uh, which actually left it unchanged at 6.4 percent. But, Greg, um, how are you thinking about the jobs number that we're going to be getting next Friday? Um, and do you have a higher degree of confidence, perhaps, um, coming out of last month, even after we had what was a big miss? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was enjoying uh, Miles' uh, description of good news and bad news. Um, I think what we have to do here is is really find the signal in all of the data that we're getting, uh, because we did get some disappointing uh, data releases for the month of April with the jobs report that was disappointing, retail sales that were flat, inflation that was rising, um, and could lead to, to some concerns. But if you read uh, the, the data and understand what's happening, it's essentially that the, the recovery is going to be bumpy. We're going to see these ups and downs. And what we're seeing is essentially a rotation in the demand mix at the same time as supply is trying to respond to very strong demand. So you're going to get these inflationary pressures, and inflation is going to be a feature of this recovery, and you're going to get some bumps along the road where jobs might not be as strong as we were expecting, where perhaps retail sales are a bit cooler, but that comes on the back of a 10% surge in, in March. So the latest data this morning just confirms the fact that GDP did start the year very strongly, a 6.4% advance, which was unrevised, um, and we saw stronger domestic demand, which was offset in part by a larger inventory drag, a sign of strong demand, and larger imports, again, a sign of strong demand. And initial claims on the labor market front continue their steady downward trend, which is very encouraging for the labor market. And, you know, and Greg, talking about those components of inflation, I mean, let's take used car sales, for example, just such an obvious example of a supply and demand imbalance. How are you kind of talking through what I imagine are, are many dozens of client concerns where people say, well, I just disagree. I think there's going to be inflation um, and they don't really care if you're outlining you know, sort of what the data are saying. Well, I think there will be inflation. Um, this is something that, that people don't necessarily understand in terms of the narrative. Um, there is essentially, there are three different types of scenarios. There's one scenario where you get a very transitory up and down spike in inflation. There's another scenario where you get an upward movement in inflation, and then you get slightly higher inflation into 2022, perhaps even 2023. And then you have a scenario which is spiraling inflation with uh, the likes of, of Larry, Larry Summers have been highlighting. We're in the middle camp here. We're going to see higher inflation. Tomorrow will likely show core PC inflation, which is the, the Fed's key gauge of inflation surpassing 3% for the first time since the 1990s. And it's likely to stick around that 3% range for the over the course of the year and into 2022. But it's not, we don't think, going to spiral out of control, which would be the concern for the Fed. So when it comes to the Fed policy um, paradigm of a very dovish uh, stance, we're going to see the Fed continue to communicate that this is largely transitory um, and that it's willing to tolerate the economy running a little bit hotter so long as it's not overheating, which would be a concern if inflation expectations were to become unmoored. Greg, what do you what do you believe will be the economic impact when the Fed does decide to start tapering bond purchases? Well, I think we're, we're starting to see, as you, you were highlighting in, in the intro, we're starting to see the Fed uh, float some balloons in terms of, of the potential for tapering to start. Um, and that's essentially how the Fed is going to proceed going forward, a very careful approach. You may remember Powell and Clarida talking back in 2018 about navigating a dark room uh, full of objects and proceeding very cautiously when it came uh, to the normalization of, of monetary policy. We're in a dark room again. We have a number of things that the Fed does not want to knock over, including financial conditions, which have been very loose. And it wants to proceed very cautiously to avoid a taper tantrum repeat of what we saw back in 2013. So it's communicating its intent to start discussions at this stage. We think that the, the announcement of a potential tapering may occur later this summer, if economic data uh, is as strong as it has been, um, with tapering starting in early 2022. And then the first rate hike still not before 2023. I don't see the Fed departing from that dovish stance um, any sooner than that. I really like uh, that analogy, and I'm glad you brought that up again, Greg. I, I want to ask about consumer spending as well, because I was intrigued by the a phrase you used in your notes to us, which is that you said it's about the tempo, not the speed of consumer spending. What do you mean by that? And is that true more broadly for the economic recovery as well? 
I think it's true for the, the broader recovery. Uh, what we were looking at uh, a few months ago was really trying to get out of this, this deep hole. But now we're in a marathon. We're in a marathon where it's all about tempo and ensuring that we grow for the longest period possible. So it's essentially focusing on ensuring that we maintain a strong momentum as we exit this crisis. And that is likely to be the case going forward. We think that there will be a summer boom in economic activity. You know, if you're trying to book vacations, you're probably seeing that prices are on the rise, indicative of this very strong demand. So we're likely to see a relaxation of pent-up demand on the service sector side. We're likely to see strong job growth. I wouldn't be surprised to see a string of 1 million plus job numbers over the coming months, over the summer. Um, and we're likely to essentially have an economy that is much stronger at the end of this year than it was at the start of the year. Um, but in growing into 2022, momentum will gradually slow and will transition into this longer run tempo type of environment rather than a booming economy. And then, Greg, finally, I guess on that, that tempo conversation, you know, we came out of 10 years with slow economic growth that I think we all sort of said, well, that, that just is what it is. And I know we're still in the heart of the rebound, but as you think about the next decade of growth and really just the, the impulse, the fiscal impulse in the U.S., how different of an environment do you think we could be entering, um, you know, as we have a changing of the guard here between boomers being the main consumptive generation into millennials, you know, really through the next probably 20 years? Well, I think there are structural impediments to growth. Uh, we're, we're still in an environment where demographics are weighing against us. Um, but there are some opportunities here for stronger growth uh, over the medium run, um, including via fiscal stimulus and fiscal stimulus rotating, rotating towards structural stimulus, stimulus that is geared towards infrastructure spending, towards uh, ensuring that the labor force is ready for the economy of tomorrow and pushing for higher productivity growth, which I think could be a positive surprise in the wake of this COVID crisis. So I think there are some potential hopeful signs that we will continue to, to grow at a fairly steady pace and that some of the uh, results of this COVID pandemic may be actually positive for productivity growth with increased automation, more business dynamism um, as potential key elements that could support stronger growth, not just today, but in the longer run. Ending on an optimistic note here, Greg Dacko, <laughs> great to see you as always. Thanks for being with us. Oxford always Economics Chief U.S. economy.